Uh, Facebook's ready. All right. One thing I know I need is a haircut. That's for sure. That's maybe going to come tomorrow. Maybe not. It's coming tomorrow. Huh? <laughs> it's time for a haircut. Um, been going nonstop for for months getting ready. We're going to show over here on this screen. Uh, tonight's presentation, like I said, is presentation 63. Um, lots of cool things. Um, I think um, as Travis Coyne has showed you a few sneak peeks. Uh, I sent him some stuff in confidence, and I guess he went and posted anyways, but it's all good. Um, they are a, a great customers, good friends, and obviously part of our team for the Baja. So just jabbing you a little bit, Travis. And uh, one other thing is Coin Power Sports was the first dealership to sign up with us uh, the very first day at Sand Sports, and uh, we appreciate that. What do we got here? UTV News of the Week. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, this one's interesting. Um, North Carolina, um, our home state, um, has legalized um, UTVs on secondary roads, uh, which is not freeways, but secondary roads. Uh, obviously getting people to the trails is what they're doing here. Um, but let me tell you, we're gonna be able to put some, uh, some hard miles on these things, log some miles pretty easy. Matter of fact, I'm just going to drive it around. Um, so thank you, uh, Roy Cooper. We do appreciate that. Um, kind of crazy, but I think it's because of the trail system up here in the um, in the mountains, and I understand what they're what they're doing. So, yeah, and Mr. Unseen Pat fishing pretty hard for them to change this uh, these bills because you need that in your state and you take action. What was it? How they do so it? This, this guy, Mr. Unseen Pat, you can go to his website or his Instagram. He's got a whole uh, history kind of of all his interactions with trying to get them legalized. And well, it's, um, it, it's, it's different. And, you know, I don't know where we're at on that as a manufacturer, but um, obviously North Carolina has uh, stepped over the line. All right, let's get into the more important thing, production speed UTV. Uh, I think this is obviously the most important thing we have going on at speed UTV. Um, customers have asked for it. They want to know where it's at. There it is. Uh, full plastic body uh, El Jefe. Um, production front diff. Production seat belts, production seats, production tires, production wheels, production shocks, axles, CVs, spindles, upright engine diff, front rear, shifter sequential, interior pictures. I'm excited. I got to be honest. This has been um, a year and a half very hard focused work by by everyone here at Speed UTV and uh, I think um, there's a lot that people need to understand that has happened I mean I, I believe without COVID one I probably wouldn't have had the personal time to get this project done but let me tell you it has backed up so many suppliers in the industry and that slowed our process down quite a bit what people need to, under, need to understand is everybody's about nine months behind on uh, on ma manufacturing production stuff uh, just based on, on the whole COVID. Obviously shipping is very difficult and um, employee staff is very difficult as well. We've been very fortunate at Speed UTV. Uh, we maintain staff throughout the whole COVID, but um, it, is, it, was, it was tough for us in the beginning. Um, but when SST wasn't racing, Casey and his team came over, jumped on board. It gave us extra um, hands and basically been nonstop. So I first want to thank everybody uh, for, for believing in us and being part of the process. And we are closing in on it for sure. So uh, there is the exterior picture. Um, I mean, there is, uh, there is the front headlights. Uh, everybody said, what do the headlights look like? There they are. Um, speed emblem in the hood. Um, I get a little bit of, it looks like a Cadillac. Well, in off-road, don't you want your car to ride like a Cadillac? Um, I believe that this will be the, uh, the Cadillac of the industry in the off-road market for sure. Got internal bypass shocks, dual-stage dual springs, 32-inch tall tires, um, beadlock wheels um, as, a, as a factory option, um, five-point seat belts, carbon fiber seats in the RG. Um, I believe they have, um, huh? LE has carbon fiber with suede um, or pleather or whatever you want to call it. Um, steering wheels, um, 
Very, very exciting stuff. Very, very exciting. Uh, largest bed in the sports UTV. As a matter of fact, I think we're the only bed in sport UTV. Is that right? Only real bed. Any real bed. Um, and you'll see some more pictures here. There it is, bed open. Everybody's asked, um, does it have my cup holders? Boom, there's the cup holders we've talked to probably in show four or five. Uh, these are some of the things that uh, customers have asked for and we've implemented it into the design as well. Uh, good, I'm glad he took those out. He had those sitting in the cup holders, but then you guys would believe that we Photoshopped everything. So I was gonna mention that to him. Go ahead and pull those back out, but it will hold your speed energy drinks right there. Um, and here is the support rod, tail light. People are gonna say, is that strong enough? We will test that. That's something that came to a question for us right away. It they probably, said he sat on it. they say they sat on it, huh? okay. Well, I probably need about a 300 pound person to sit on it. Um, and no, I'm not close to 300 yet, stop it. Um, we need to uh, maybe move that back, but they say it's uh, strong enough over its factory. And projector headlights, speed logo, the detail right here. This is the stuff that just really makes me excited. The detail of our speed logo in the light, very, very strong, very detailed very close to what's on my shirt. I um, want to thank everybody for uh, for all the late nights of, no, I want it to look like this and it has to be like that. And we need to stay consistent with our brand image. Um, dry sump tank. Um, this is a proper dry sump tank. As you can see, it's got cast top and bottoms with a filter built into it with a sight tube in it. It has internal baffles like an SST oil tank. It's made for three seconds of vertical G, which I don't think anybody will be flying and it's a speed UTV for three seconds of vertical G like an SST. Internal aluminum, by, uh, aluminum shocks, uh, aluminum reservoir, aluminum threads, aluminum outer can dissipates heat better. Um, and this is, a, this is a pretty sexy picture right here. Uh, there's so much engineering that is, has gone into this picture alone and I, I would like to spend a couple minutes and just talk about that. What's that? Everybody give me a hard time on the sexy? It's beautiful. It's, it's beautiful. I mean, if you look at the welds here, uh, I know this is, um, that was a winch mount. I don't think it'll be there in the next model um, just because I, it cleans it up, makes it a little harder to get in these. And I don't know, out of the percentage, it's probably only 5% of our cars have winches. But uh, bolts, can somebody walk outside and grab a bolt? I got bolts. <laughs> Bitching. You guys are on it. Thank you. Um, production bolts. Uh, you know, I shared with you guys the the aftermarket bolts we made back in the day for the XX, but full shoulder captured bolts, nuts, everything that should be on an off-road vehicle is built into this vehicle. Now I will. Um, I've got a spindle here, and I'll kind of put the package together for you. And we'll zoom in on some of those here in a couple minutes. But this front bulkhead, uh, this is the, um, the cast bulkhead that's been finished machine. You can see the speed bolts. You can see there's proper two and a half threads on the outside of the bolt. Double shear sway bar mount. Um, we got the, uh, the holders for the brake line. Um, can you clarify spring color for them? Yeah, spring color. Um, yeah, these will not be production. These are still some stuff we're playing with. So with the blue lower spring, yes, we work with King. We've worked with King for a long time. Uh, that is a tune-up setup that we did back in the past. And those are pre-tuned shocks that have been, have been used and tested. Uh, and those have our, our spring rates on them. So we were able to learn a lot with that throughout our pre-manufacturing testing. Same thing with the rear. Don't panic on the blue springs. You will see a charcoal spring on that thing. It'll have a charcoal silver spring. It'll have orange springs on the RG. This is obviously based off an RG because it's got orange A-arms top and bottom. Don't get concerned with the springs, please. Um, just the structure, the, uh, the rod end on the sway bar links, the steering rack, the hard lines, uh, everything we see here is is exactly what we had intended from design. And, you know, in the past with, um, not to mention other manufacturers, what we designed would get changed and not have the same um, 
structural integrity when we were done with it. And being the CEO and working with the design team here at Speed UTV and knowing exactly what I want, uh, this car is, is that. Uh, one thing I need you guys all to remember is if I was going to build it my way, this would be a $150,000 to $200,000 UTV. I do have to dumb it down to get it to a price range that someone else would like. And we've got this thing dead on comparison with the high-end Can-Am and the high-end Polaris. So you guys asked for it, we delivered. Full-blown, proper-built, structural sound car right from the manufacturer. Um, interior cockpit view. Um, this is an exciting one right here. This is the, um, you can see the kind of D-shaped steering wheel um, that we have there. Uh, it's been opened up a ton. We built custom steering wheels to be able to see into the 10 inch flat screen dash. As you can see, the glove box already has the recessed dash area for the secondary dash. You can see the plugs for the AC vents. So when we get to the air conditioning model, the dash has already been pre-thought out of air conditioning, vents, everything else that everybody's asked for. Yes, we will have those that will pop out with full heater options um, in the open cockpit car, but you'll be able to channel and flow your air on you. So a lot of, a lot of design details built into this. Um, this is another view closed in on the sequential shifter. Uh, it does have the numbers, but the shifter retain comes back to the standard position all the time. This is the production dash. You can see it's not on. You see the buttons, you see the glare, glare off the screen. That is a, one of our production dashes in there. And um, the secondary lifter shifter is like what you would see on a, on a Jeep or something like that. Instead of having electronic secondary shifters, we wanted to make sure that we could manually um, shift this thing into low. Um, split brake pedal, gas pedal, as you can see, it's got a big massive brake pedal on it like we see on one of my trophy trucks. I can, there's more of that in there, okay. Um, as you see, that's, that's got a, a massive pedal so you could right foot brake or you can left foot, right foot brake if you choose, whatever the driver chooses. Um, this has obviously got the RG seats in it with the stitching. Uh, this is zoomed in there. There you go. Daniel said we would see some more of this. Um, this is the driver's compartment area with switches where they're at there underneath behind the steering wheel. This left a big area open for radio intercom. This gives you your, your option for your regular stereo sound system, uh, which would be your, your banging music, our kicker music that we have coming through there. This is a zoomed in picture of the shifter. The shifter always returns to the center position. The numbers on here, the shifter will not line up with it, but it does tell you what you got to do to get to the gear you desire. So that is that. We will see a rubber boot on here. There's a couple things we still want to work on fit and finish wise, but very, very cool stuff there. Uh, there you go. This is probably the view that a lot of people wanted to see. Uh, this is, um, the speaker over here, I'll zoom this in a little bit more. As you see over on the left, we got the speaker pointing uphill. When you open up the doors, you got sound going forward, you got sound going backwards. So if you're hanging out at the bottom of Oldsmobile Hill at Glamis during either New Year's, Thanksgiving, whatever you may choose, um, you've got your sound system that you paid for that not only gives you sound when you're in the car, but when you're outside the car, you can open up your doors. I think the other thing is the way the doors open up pretty much to 90 degrees, easy access inside and out. And yes, you can open up the front or the rear door individually, whatever you choose. Um, as you see, this thing has got all of its, um, if it's finished features, um, and we're, we're really pleased where we're at. Uh, this is uh, the back door again. As you see, we got your little pocket built in here. If you wanna stuff some gloves or um, I don't know if goggles will fit down there or not, but you definitely get some gloves. This piece here could be an, out, an accessory that had a stretchable um, door there as well later on. Um, door handles, grab bars for closing the door. Um, seat belts that wrap around the, the bar. Um, this is um, intake systems for the CVT. So over here on this side, it's got the grill mesh for the radiator 
has the access door to the radiator lid. Um, detail fit and finish wise, nailed it, nailed it. And it's only gonna get better from here. Uh, this is the inside of the number plate. So uh, on the inside of the number plate, uh, nobody's ever done this before where it's on the inside. Um, this is a pre-filter obviously for the CBT. I think we showed you guys a bunch of how that stuff works before in the past. And then obviously fit and finish down into the bed with some slots if you wanted to put dividers into your uh, your bed. Um, there's a, a better picture of the uh, the gas and the brake pedal. Um, seat belts, yes, these are five point harnesses, cam locks right from the factory. I uh, see it over here on this one. So you guys asked, we delivered and. Did we show the picture of why we use a five point? Towards the end. Towards the end. So I'll get on to seat belts a little bit more, but I like this picture here. Rear cup holders, a little rear tray that's got a cigarette lighter and a USB. And this opening right here is for your radiator intercom to plug into there. And then obviously another AC heat vent duct right there. Very fit and finish detailed uh, for a UTV. I think it's, um, I think when you climb into our car and compare it to another car, it'll be like a finished production uh, machine where the rest are dune buggies with some panels on them. Um, bolts, I talked about, we now have production bolts, which is a big thing because we were not going to deliver a car that was like everybody else. Um, I have pounded it in, pounded it in. Uh, other manufacturers I work with didn't believe the philosophy, didn't understand what we do with our vehicles, don't understand how hard you guys ride them and why we do things the way we do. Uh, on Speed UTV, you got every suspension, steering, suspension, shock, hub, spindle, A-arm, Everything is shoulder bolts. And let's talk about bolts now that we got that opened up. And they got me a Sharpie here. How, what's that? Next slide. Next slide. Oh, there we go. Thank you. Makes it a little bit easier. But I don't believe, matter of fact, and it's not only I don't believe, I know. Not Chevrolet, not Ford, not Jeep, not Dodge, not Can-Am, not Polaris. Um, properly shoulder their bolts. There's not an not a auto manufacturer in the industry today that does this at the highest level. And as you see, shoulder bolt, you're gonna say, well, that's gonna bottom out on the nut. Nope, this is one of our patented designs that we have about the nut, and I'll zoom into my Insta, and then I'll go over to Rob's camera as well. But as you see here, the nut has a recessed shoulder in there. This covers over, and as you tighten down this nut, it allows you to turn a bolt into a proper shear pin. This is done on a lot of tractors where they don't even use bolt. They just shove a shear pin in there. Well, at Speed UTV, everything suspension from the factory comes with a proper hardware. Now, that doesn't mean your aluminum panels that you hold on or this bracket that you might do uh, isn't properly shouldered. The only ones that are mattered is engine, drivetrain, um, suspension, steering, shocks, brakes. Check this out, rounded head. Production bolt, NAS style rounded head. And the other thing nice, all these bolts, same wrench, left and right. Very, very uh, minimal change of tools to work on your car. If you have a 19 millimeter, it works on all your shock and suspension bolts, but it also works on your lug nuts. So you carry an impact gun and, you, and a 19. Anything suspension-wise, you can tighten. All the way down, even to the cool little bolts. They look really big. They got big heads on them. People said, oh, we can't manufacture that. We pushed and we pushed and we pushed. And we have a small bolt that even holds the um, sway bars. Sway bars are in double shear. I saw that back over here a little bit. Like I said, tonight's a good show, but as you zoom in here, you can see over here, this is this bolt right here. This is a double shear, dual adjustable sway bar, so you can soften or stiffen your sway bar. 
depends on your riding condition, but also has a proper shoulder bolt all the way through as well. So these are like this because we have failed them on other manufacturers. We have failed them. We asked for it to be double shear. We didn't get what we wanted based on cost. Here now this time, everything is done the way it should be. Same thing here, even the studs, nice round head on this side. It's got the knurling in the middle. It sticks outside the hub a little bit so that the wheel actually hides the shear point of the wheel studs as well. As well as we do have, and I wanna zoom in on this, the hubs do have um, center hub radius. So the hub, the lug nuts just hold the wheel into the radius. So it rides on this shear plane here as well, which makes pretty much all of the wheel studs only a position to hold the wheel registered into its register. So all small details have been thought about on the Speed UTV. Uh, this is our final front spindle hub assembly. Can somebody grab that scale outside? Front hub scale assembly with a spindle, which is a two piece spindle which allows us to run the same bearings. So there's your spindle, beautiful part. Bearings, same, front and rear. Removable brake pad, caliper mount. This way, if you choose to put bigger wheels on later, you can put bigger rotors on it. This is adjustable, front and rear. Beautiful part, beautiful, beautiful. And this whole combination not only being um, structurally sound, weight-wise, hub, spindle, bearing. Uh-oh, now I did it. Didn't get it in there. Um, might have to lick this one. Um, all right, well, I did it. Uh, the weight of this part. Eleven pounds. So if you had a wheel stud on it and a lug nut, I'd have to times that by four. Eleven point four pounds. Lug nuts, studs, pretty much everything. It's missing a brake rotor bracket, but beautiful, beautiful front upright assembly. Over here on this side, bolts. I know we showed it over there, but I want to close in on this a little bit more because this stuff here really, really excites me. Yeah, please bring me those over, Kyle. Uh, I got to run washers on your bolts because you have the radius head. So if you work on your car later, look at the fit there. I mean, there's just no, no rattle. But if you look, there's a little bit of an air gap with a radius head bolt, acts like NAS. Got to make sure you put a washer on it that fills in the bevel. Still sticks out, about 150 thou. So when this thing tensions down, two threads sticking out the end. Solid shoulder, all spindles, proper. This is the way it is on all the suspension. These are the small details that make a difference between um, a car being reliable and structurally sound for years or a car that just wallers every single hole out. Because when you land your threads on your tab, it just doesn't have the surface area here. This works as a file and it basically wallers out all your tabs and brackets right from the get-go. Uh, the spindle bolts are the same on the inside. Spindle bolts are the same on the inside. Yes, same physical bolt. So the spindle bolt does inner pivots on A-arms and the spindles at the wheel. Same bolt, same part, a lot of, lot of components. Shock and the tie rods are the same? On the lowers. So we're using common size bolts in multiple locations. Obviously, we manufacture more bolts, brings our cost down but it gives you at the end of the day, a better product for a better price. These are 12 millimeter bolts. These are 12 millimeters and they are done with a radius head. Very seldom do you see a metric bolt that operates like a NAS.
How are we doing tonight? We got some people on? 250. 250. A little low, but okay. I guess they'll be watching the uh, the second show, but it's okay. Um, interior. Talked about bolts, spindles, hubs, all those cool parts. There it is one more time. We will post this so you guys can look at it. Your production car will be like this. You it's know kind what grade the bolts are? Robbie proof. Okay. Better than 10.9. They're better than a 10.9, which equivalent in American standards is about a grade eight. Uh, metric is 10.9 for a grade eight, uh, but they're better than that, and they're structurally properly done, and they're as well as shop peen, so they look like they're a little beat up, but that knocks all the rough edges and surfaces off them. Always. It's an off-road car that drives on gravel roads. Someone asked, does it need thread locker? I said, always. All right, skid plates, um, accessory skid plates. Um, we've talked about this. I know some people have bought accessory skid plates. Um, Kyle, why don't we come in and talk about the accessory skid plate here just a little bit, because I know you've been involved in this process, but the standard skid plate is what thickness? Five mil thick. Five mil, and what is five mil leak? Uh, sorry, what in the one, one, one nine eight seven, so standard yeah. skid plate. So the Speed UTV comes with a standard skid plate across from front to rear, and that standard skid plate is 197. So 197 thick, that's a pretty thick standard skid, feet per, skid plate for a production vehicle. But then we got guys that wanna go rock crawling, and they wanna go drive it in, in heavy duty woods. This is a UHMW form material, correct? UHMW, so it is the proper material. Uh, that we would use on either a Dakar, Gordini, yeah, Ultra uh, Trophy yeah. Truck, Ultra 4, any of that. Comes 197. The added, the added uh, increased thickness. It's at least doubled. It's at least doubled. And let's talk about what we did in the high impact areas. So what does this orange area represent? Yes, yeah, so we actually go up, we taper up nice and smooth up to a 12 millimeter thickness in areas that are more likely to uh, tag rocks or roots or anything of that nature. So six inches in front of the uh, output of the transaxle and six inches behind is thickened to 12 millimeters. So that's half inch basically? Yeah. Half inch thick yeah. skid plate on our increased skid plate thickness. And it, what is it on the other, 375? Yeah. 375, so three eighths, is that, is that a same? Yeah, three, eighths, yeah. three eighths thick, yeah. uh, pretty much everywhere else, which is double of what the so standard high. skid plate is. But remember, when you're talking double, you're talking more weight. But if you're driving on the rocks, you're not so worried about the weight. Yeah. All right. And then in the front end as well, we can let's, talk let's about slide over uh, the front end. This next slide. So we added some kind of boat sides to the uh, to protect the bulkheads. So uh, we were having a couple of small impacts on yep. the ears. We saw that on the test cart. Yep. Yeah. So what we did was there's uh, 10 millimeters of offset from that surface to the surface of our little skid plate here. So those ears are now protected, and we're both sided up with clearance on the lower control arms so that you can just uh, skate off the rocks and not uh, not touch the bulkhead at all. Perfect, excellent. Well, thank you for that. And I know that this has been a project you've been working on. And this is you know stuff that it had to be done for production, but we know that customers want more. Yep. And you know we could offer this on every car, but then every car would be more expensive. A guy that goes to sand and says, I don't need a half inch skid plate. Why does my skid plate weigh 50 pounds? Yep where he only needs a skid plate just to keep the sand out of it so he can run our standard 197 thickness. Yeah, exactly. And then the other thing we did was uh, everything overlaps and everything has a smooth transition. So does it overlap going backwards from front? So if you back over it, because yeah. so, you do a lot more driving going forward than you do backwards, what he's saying is it waterfalls. So if you drag in the skid when you hit the first one, it just waterfalls itself right onto the second one. And then continued all the way to the third, and it is waterfalled all the way back, so you don't peel the skid plates off. Also, it's got a nice, good round radius here, and these have some massive bolts to be able to hold it on as well, correct? Yeah. Cool. Yep. Thank you. Uh, I think we've talked about skid plates, talked about, as you see, this is the full body skid that we're talking about. As Kyle was saying, it starts over here at the front. It has more thickness in the middle where it's trying to protect it. It's got little overhangs here to protect the, the, uh, the front diff. Um, here's the rear diff. This is obviously something that we really got to focus on. We learned a lot in the past with this. Uh, this will protect the rear differential. 
Also, we will still run our rubber bump rubber underneath this so that it'd be like, imagine a rock hitting on a piece of aluminum compared to a rubber mallet hitting on a piece of aluminum, give a little shock uh, deflection so it doesn't shock the diff and, and hopefully not crack the diff. Depends on where you're riding, what kind of rocks you're doing, but we are trying to think of all the small details so that um, when you get your vehicle and you're out there bashing, you can continue to bash and really not have a problem. Increased thickness, um, interior pictures, front hub, spindles, bolts, interior, just the fit and finish and details, awesome. Uh, really hats off to the full engineering team and everybody in manufacturing that has really pushed for the best, um, best we can do. Um, um, you know, I, I believe it's the best vehicle because we did it, but this is the best that we could do to try to keep it uh, clean and detailed and structurally sound. Uh, that will be an accessory. Um, we will definitely make those. We know that people are going to want to go to King of the Hammers and you know, want some UHMW skids. We will work on those as well. Um, but there's no reason to work on skid plates for A-arms before we have cars out there. But I know that the standard skid, we had to get some of the stuff in process. We will work on trailing arms and A-arm skid plates as well for your heavy-duty rock crawling applications. Stereo speakers, built-in doors, built-in pockets, nice door latches, grab handles, five-point seats, carbon fiber seats. Uh, these are not cheap plastic seats uh, in our car. We believe that, believe that the, the safety, the driver comfort, and seat belts are some of the most important things that we need to focus on uh, because this car is, is a monster. It's, uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Sequential shifter, showed you guys how that worked uh, a couple weeks ago. Custom D-shaped steering wheel to see the bigger dash. Pre-wired uh, radio intercom, um, removable dash plate, 90 degree opening doors for easy access. Um, let me think, double A post um, right here. Supporting the A pillar, tied in, structurally sound. Same thing in the back, A post in the rear, very similar you see on most trophy trucks. You definitely see it on my SST trucks and my trophy trucks. Any questions out there? You guys see are coming in? When am I getting my car? <laughs> Real simple. You're getting your car when your car's done. And your car is getting closer to getting done. So, um, Hope you guys are excited as we are about this, but we are not going to get this far down the line and give you an unreliable POS. Uh, we're gonna make sure we give you the best car we know how to give you, and we're gonna take the time. Now remember, we do have a lot of other suppliers, so this isn't Robbie whittling up his parts in his garage and, and trying to build 50 cars a day like we've told you. There's a lot of suppliers that have to be online with us, and as everybody in the industry knows, go ask Can-Am, Polaris, Mastercraft, Ford, Chevy, Dodge, Tesla, or anybody else. Uh, there is definitely supply chain issues, and we're struggling with them just like everybody else. But that doesn't mean we're going to hold our hands up and say, oh, you know, we're blaming this whole thing on COVID. No. A lot of this has been uh, attention to detail and focusing on building the best car and not letting you guys push me into something that I know is, is not up to... The, uh, the speed energy, Robbie Gordon standards that, um, that we build here at speed. Is there a four-wheel drive shifter function? There is a four-wheel drive shifter function right here. Click, 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 click. How about, is it push to start? Push to start? Um, you know, um, stay tuned. How much do you Double. Yeah, it adds double. It's double thickness. It adds double the weight. What is standard weight? Kyle, you think you can pull it up for me in the next few minutes? Uh, yeah. yeah, Kyle says he can go to work and get us that. So um, four-wheel drive shifter is this lever here, which is, which is this lever here. Three selections, two-wheel drive, four-wheel open, four-wheel spool. So yes, it locks in. Are the seats race legal? Uh, depends on what series. Uh, depends on what the series spec is. There's so many variables um, 
I'm going to tell you our seats are as good as anything in the industry. I'm confident about that right now today. Are you just testing the 220 horsepower? Or you also Why would I just drive 220 horsepower? Come on. <laughs> the question was, um, are we testing the 225 and the 300? If we're going to test things, why wouldn't we test it at 300? Now, we have done a lot of 225 testing down in Baja when we were on PMIX. And obviously, very, being very conservative, uh, making sure we didn't get detonation, stuff like that. But we have run a lot of E85 through the motor. All right. What do we got? We have um, Stadium Super Trucks. Uh, we're back at Mid Ohio on July 3rd and 4th uh, for another Stadium Super Truck event. Um, Purchase spare parts. You can either purchase spare parts through your dealer or you can purchase par spare parts through Speed UTV. And yes, we will have, with, with the first cars uh, that arrive, we will have make sure that we have 10% of parts built up in the inventory. The, no, it's my requirement. We've got to have spare tires, got to have spare shock, got to have spare bearings, spare wheels, spare turbo, spare engines, because all the crazy things that happen with these cars, we know that we're going to see a car go and drive into a a lake of water. And sure, that guy's going to try to turn that car back into the dealer and say, I want warranty with it. Uh, we, we will know that you drove it into a lake of water and the motor hydraulic, and that's why the motor doesn't run. So a lot of these failures are done uh, based on driver use or driver misuse. And um, obviously at Speed UTV, like other manufacturers, we do know how to track this. And heck, give it just a little bit of time and we'll be like scoring international. A week later, we're gonna see your video post online. We'll know exactly what you did. Uh, it's amazing what these uh, cell phones have done and what your buddies will post. And trust me, we will get them from the Speed UTV customers as well. And one thing nice about having a master number, we know who you are. Okay. Oh, you, you did do that. You weren't supposed to do that. You need to take that out before I post it, right? Um, this is, this is right here. One example that I'm going to block that out of it. Um, you're mean, these guys are mean, but, um, what I have here is this is a four point harness that comes in a Can-Am. And this is an example of what not to do. They got a sternum strap here and that sternum strap is sitting about one inch from the guy's neck. All right, this seat belt is supposed to be down here. Um, but this is the kind of stuff that we see. This is what we're paying attention to. And this is why the Speed UTV comes with a five point harness. And we will give you an instruction video of how to hook up your five point harness. But um, right here, this is a, a perfect example. And this is a factory Can-Am driver. Um, and Obviously, they know how to set up their seatbelt, but when you're the driver, you've got to be responsible to take care of your passengers as well. And when you see something like this right here, this honestly scares me to death. This is right here, inch and a half from the trach. And we know how soft the skin is here. Um, definitely would not want to crash with your sternum strap sitting that high and seat belts like this. Please adjust this and um, readjust uh, who it came from, zoom in on the driver, on the passenger, and customers, please, please, please pay attention out there. It's free, costs no money. And we're gonna give you all the rights and the wrongs of what to do and what not to do, but I hope I don't see this in a speed UTV car. Well, the first thing you're not gonna, because we're not gonna put a sternum strap on it, because we learned years ago in NASCAR, the sternum strap was not a good thing to have, because the driver and the body goes forward Chances of frontal impact with a UTV, we know it's high. That's why I went for the five point harnesses. Um, at the end of the day, I want to give you guys and girls the best safety items we could give you in your car. But this right here just actually pisses me off. Uh, five speed uh, five point harness uh, in every vehicle. Yes, it comes in every vehicle because it's the right thing to do. It's not about cost, it's not about reducing costs, it's about your safety. Huh? Two inch, two inch, 
five point harnesses with built in pads, adjusters, lock it down. Make sure your children in the back have seat belts on. They're sitting in the right position. Shoulders are held down the right way. Your passenger, look over, check on them, make sure they're okay before you decide to take off, please. Time for a call? Okay, go ahead. I don't know. I mean, uh, your aftermarket booster seat fit in the factory seats? I don't know how many booster seats are there, hundreds. Um, you're gonna have to make that decision yourself. It's probably one that fits. Or maybe we need to make one that fits. But uh, on the other side, please look after your passengers, look after your kids, look after your friends, look after your family and enjoy riding. But we're getting close and hopefully uh, you guys like what you saw. I'll go back to one of our earlier slides and let it sit here as I take calls. I think that one right there, pretty awesome. Opening doors, speakers in there, pretty much um, full plastic, plastic roof. Awesome, just downright cool. All right, I'm gonna take calls, let's do it. Oh, hang on, I'm trapped. Uh, spare tank, fuel tank is not in the car yet, and uh, when that is, we will give you all the information on the sp on the spare fuel tank. I don't believe we even offer one of those yet. Did they do it? Uh, yeah, we don't even offer we don't even offer a spare fuel tank yet. Okay, we told you guys that's something coming in the very near future. Uh, it's not even an option today available. Hello, you're on with Robbie Gordon. How are you doing? Yeah, it is. How are you? Hey, how's it going? It's Paul Anaker again. Hey, Paul. How's it going? Doing good. Doing good. Hey, I like what I see. The car's looking good. I uh, just wanted to also verify the front A-arms. Are those going to be charcoal gray on the LE model? Those will be charcoal gray on the LEs. They'll be orange on the, um, on the RGs. Perfect. Perfect. Hey, I know I've, I've asked the numerous times. I, I know you're you're in, uh, where are you at, North Carolina? Yeah, we're currently in Charlotte. Now, I got excited last week when I saw the uh, Tesla Jefe's in Anaheim, and I'm trying to get you to come up here to uh, Coos Bay uh, UTV takeover from today through Sunday. Is there any chance you're coming, or are you guys, you guys booked already? No, we're, we're head down, focused on production cars. You know, We work every day with our suppliers, um, work way into the, in the night. We're working two shifts right now. And it's, um, it's pretty gnarly. And unfortunately, we have plenty of sales. Um, we don't need to market. We don't need to promote. Um, that's fortunate. Fortunately, sorry. Fortunately, we have plenty of sales um, to be able to launch this brand and get it out there. So we really need to focus on, on building the right car. Right, right. No, I appreciate everything you guys are doing. Um, one other question I did have is uh, on the... Uh, belt temp gauge. Uh, we do primarily sand dune riding and stuff like that. Um, that temperature is critical with those paddle tires. Do you, when do you anticipate that you guys will have the, the one that's integrated with the dash available um, so that we don't buy the aftermarket brands and stuff like that? Well, obviously look at the aftermarket brand. It's stuff that we're working with, with our electricians and obviously costing of what this is going to cost for the infrared. But, um, you know, we know we all know this isn't a isn't a cheap item, and we are working on having that integrated. What's your master number, Paul? Uh, twenty one seventy. Twenty one seventy, and what size are you? Uh, XL. All right, let me see that. That's the mock-up. So here is a mock-up temperature gauge, no guts inside of it. It does have the wires and it does plug into CAN bus. We do not have a final price yet. That's why it's not open and available yet today on our site. We will have it soon and we'll keep you guys updated. Okay, but you guys will offer that here hopefully shortly. Yes. Okay, perfect, perfect. 
All right. Well, just once again, I appreciate all the hard work you guys are doing. Um, I know it's going to take a little while to get it out, but it's well worth the wait. So uh, keep up, the, keep up the good work. Yeah. What do you, what do you think of the card night? I mean, all good, right? What's that? Is it what you thought it would be, or is it more? Oh, it's more. It's more. I'm Perfect. Just, I'm just waiting to come out. Uh, you know, I sold the players as I had. People are, you know, they ask why you didn't keep it until the new one comes out. But honestly, uh, it's a no-brainer. I mean, when you started doing the shows and you started uh, showing the components that this thing is coming out with, there's nobody who's going to compete with it. So it's it's a no-brainer for me. Well, thank you. The, the, the weight, the weight, the least, the least of my concerns right now. I just, I'm just happy to be able to get in, get one of these things ordered. Um, I'm looking forward to the graphics and stuff like that. Um, nobody else offers that. You've got to spend quite a bit of money to pick up stuff like that. So, honestly, you're giving us, uh, you know, stock. You're giving us what people spend thousands for to get the other ones, and they're not even close at that point to what what you're giving us. So, well, I do, I do appreciate that. Just so you know, there will be a price change on our car very soon. So anybody that got in early is going to be really happy for what they got in for. Anybody that sold their car and think they're going to get back in line, get ready for a price increase. Awesome. Awesome. All well, well, Robbie, I'll let you get the next caller again. I appreciate everything you guys are doing. Looking forward to this thing coming out. And uh, maybe when you guys get this done, you'll come ride with us out here sometime. We would love to. I know you got some great riding up there. Talked to Greg Biffle a lot about it. He loves it up there and we want to come and ride. Sorry. We're not there this week. No, no problem, Robbie. No problem. All right, we'll talk to you later. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hey, you're on with Robbie Gordon. How you doing? Hey, you're on with Robbie Gordon. How you doing? I'm good. Good, good. You tuned into the show tonight? Yes. All right, what's your master number? But uh, mine and my husband's is 1568, and then we got both of our kids one, or they got one. Well, thank you very much. I do appreciate your business. Um, what's your name? Yeah. Anna Nesbitt. Anna. Ginger's in the background knowing exactly who you are. <laughs> Hi, Ginger. She's been awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you. Have, I'm very fortunate uh, to have the staff that we have from, you know, from the front office to the engineering to the fabrication to the, to the sales guys, uh, everybody. Uh, guys and girls are working very hard. We've got a good team. Yeah, you do. I've dealt with Connor, Ginger, um, Kyle. They've all been great over the last year, so we're really excited. Well, thank you. Uh, how can I? What so, what size shirt you want tonight? Two uh, X. Double X. All right, sounds good. Uh, how can I help you? What's your question? So my question is, I'm four eleven. I'm very short. Um, I did find the car finally in Parker after driving around for three days, and they let me sit in it at the car wash. How'd that go? Um, Could you see over the dash? I, <laughs> they didn't you know, even have to that, and I was so excited I didn't pay much attention. My issue was reaching the gas pedal. Oh, no, you weren't and thinking right. about riding this thing. You're thinking about driving it. So let's... Uh, I am the main driver. <laughs> I got to love that. All right, cool. Uh, woman in charge right there. Um, so the seat uh, is on a uphill slider. So as you slide forward, the seat doesn't just slide forward, it slides forward uphill. So it's um, bringing you higher into the seating position so that you can actually see over the steering wheel in the column. So there's that. Obviously, there's the air pad that you could pump up. I got Rob Harris in the background. You know, he said phone books. Um, I asked Max the other day if he knew what a phone booth was. I don't even know if they have phone books anymore, do they? <laughs> yeah, someone, someone said um, they were, I, I forget who it was. I believe it was one of the, uh, the marketing guys at MTEG. Uh, he told Max and me, SST racing is like a fight in a phone booth. And Max said, what is a phone booth? He's never seen one. Kid's never seen a phone booth. I mean, it's really starting to date us, isn't it? Yeah. 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 The best thing is the orange phone. He looked at the orange phone and said, he started trying to push the button. He didn't even understand how to dial it. All right. So legs are uh, really short. 
um, can't reach the pedals. Um, one thing you could do is you could add additional holes into your seat and slide your seat forward on the seat frame. That's a, that's a suggestion. Um, the other thing you can do what I did for Max back in the day, you could take some two by fours, drill a couple bolts in them, put them through the holes, and you can bring your pedals back to you. But you gotta be careful because the throttle pedal with the extra weight could get you some throttle isolation. Um, but I think Max won races with, uh, with two by fours bolted to the pedals. What my husband was wondering, because one of the problems was I couldn't sit back comfortable in the seat and reach the pedal. If I scoot forward, I can reach them. Was we did buy the air pad for the seat. He was wondering if he should buy a, another one to put at the back of it. And would that prop me up in a comfortable position? And how hard would that be for him to install that in there? He does a lot of custom work for us. Oh, I think he if he, if he does custom work, he can figure it out. But I think the easiest thing... Okay would potentially drill some new holes in the bottom of the seat, use some big fender washers, and slide your seat forward on the bracket. Is there an opportunity, I'm just question. is there an opportunity to add extra holes into the seat bracket? Is it wide enough, or are we all the way at the front? I mean, we, we were thinking of going backwards. You know, you, you are, you're big boys, I mean, but this, you know, now this is going the complete opposite. Is there any room for them to add an additional hole? We can take a look at that. I'll, take a, I'll take a look at this. I'll have Ginger send you a, a CAD picture of what the seat base looks like. Yeah. I don't know okay. if there's enough room to drill an extra hole, but one thing you could do is you could put an adapter plate on it. Yeah. So you could do bolt to the original holes and then have two more holes that went forward to lift you up farther forward. So, you know, if there's a will, there's a way. There's a lot of right. creative fabricators out there that, that can come up with this. Um, maybe an adapter plate, something like that. Okay, yeah, that's what my husband, because he's six four, so that's the issue when we switch. He, you got to go back as well, so you know that that yeah, you got to you got to be able to adjust it back as well. So um, I, I can come up with some ideas. So I'll have Ginger send you a okay. a picture of CAD. Um, the problem with pushing you forward in the seat, and this is just me thinking about safety. I've I preach safety right. so much. Then I would have you out in front of the shoulder supports, and I like to keep your shoulders supported so that you have lateral left and right support if you ever did get out of control. Okay. Yeah, like I said, I was able to get the seat. When I brought it all the way forward, I could, but I had to sit like up. It wasn't comfortable for me. I don't like this. Uh, it was, yeah. or I'm sorry, I needed to sit up. I'm sorry, I have that the opposite. And I was having to like sit back to be have my shoulders against the seat. So that's why he was wondering about putting that air cushion in the back part of the seat. Yeah, maybe maybe one thing we could do is a spacer under the um, a spacer under the back bolts and sit the seat up more. That would still work for him. He'd be able to slide back for his legs. Right. He'd be forward okay. just a little bit. But I mean, when you're in that far back position, you know, you're 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 way out there on the arms. You know, you can probably get a little bit into the the NASCAR mode where you're up on the wheel, or he might be up on the wheel, but he might be able to accommodate right. you just by by putting a half inch spacer in the back seat and, and standing the, uh, the seat up. But if I listen, yeah, Ginger, I just think about it. If I listen to you, you're in control of the situation anyways. Tell him to sit in the passenger seat. <laughs> yeah, he does most of the time. But if I do want to drink, then I get the passenger seat. Never drink and drive with this car. So I do appreciate I, you saying that. I don't that. ever drink and drive it with anything. I was hit by a drunk driver at 15. So that's a big no-no in my household. Yeah. So yeah. But uh, so I always laugh and joke. If you ever see me in the passenger seat of the truck or or side by side or anything, generally I'm drinking. That means you got liquid courage, huh? <laughs> yeah. All right, cool. Well, good All talking right, to you, Anna. She can send that. That'll be good. And thanks. And you're doing awesome. We're really excited. Thank you very much. Appreciate you tuning in tonight. Thanks. Bye. Bye. All right, caller number three. Who's the winner tonight? What? what let's go four, huh? Number four is the winner. Hey, you're on with Robbie Gordon, your caller number three. Hello? Yep, you're number three, and you heard me say number four is the winner. Um, what's your master number, bud? Uh, 1107. 1107. Well, thank you very much for being a customer. We do appreciate every, appreciate everybody. Um, what's your size? Uh, XL. XL, excellent. And your name? Nick. Nick. 
Thank you, Nick. All right. Uh, what's your question tonight at Speed UTV? Um, just a couple quick ones. I was just wondering, new air intakes, if you guys have had a chance to test those for, you were thinking you might get some whistles. Yep. Um, we do not have our, our final cover that holds the bearings. So right now it's open today still, because that's obviously a large tool. And that tool got changed after our first set of CVTs, which we all talked about. Um, hopefully we see that tool here and then we'll be able to see it. We don't hear the whistling, but until we put that cover on and that air is running through that wind tunnel, we won't know what that answer is until that time. And obviously we're gonna adjust for that as well. So these are some of the, uh, the small details, but the clean air system heading in is very, very high. Um, as far as I'm concerned, you're gonna be, uh, you're gonna need a snorkel on your mouth to be able to uh, to drive this thing in deep enough water to, to hydraulic it. <laughs> awesome. I've got an enclosed catch coming, so I'm not worried about that. Awesome, well thank you, and uh, I do appreciate it. Obviously, we will totally have it figured out before we do the enclosed caps. Did you guys ever figure out that uh, you, were, you were a little displeased with the steering when you guys were testing? Did you guys figure out the Steering boxes to get that happy for you? Well, we, we are using some of the best guys in the industry. We have our friends, um, um, Charlie is working with us at Power Steering Solutions. I believe the car was with him yesterday up in Apple Valley. And I know they're continuing to do stuff. Now it's, for me as a race car driver, it's tolerable. For a customer that is gonna pick this car apart for everything, uh, I believe that we've got air getting introduced in the system and we will have a, a little bit of an air shake, but we will solve it. We will fix it. And we're continuing to make new parts to uh, potentially eliminate this. And like I said, we can, okay. I can square up, I can go through the hoops, um, you know, with, with hands very lightly on the steering wheel, steering wheel stays straight, square up on a one foot foot rock at 60 and blow the wheel off the thing. Doesn't move the steering wheel, get on a gravel road, and just a little bit of chatter that I'm uncomfortable with and I know customers will complain about. So we're working on it. We will solve it. We will not release it until it happens, but we will get that solved. And we do have a Band-Aid for it, but we're trying to do it the right way. Okay. All right. And two more quick ones. Um, is the swag stuff still coming? I know you've got thousands of customers. Oh, is swag still, cool. still coming? Yes. Um, yeah, there's sweatshirts are coming. There's a whole bunch of stuff coming and uh, give us just a little bit more time. Obviously the swag side of it. Uh, I do appreciate you guys wanting the swag and we know customers want it, but at the same time, we want to make sure that we, um, we worry about the car and a lot of the swag. I hung up on him. Can you give me his number? I'll call him back. Just finish the answer. All right, I'll finish the answer. Swag's coming. A lot of it is the uh, interface on how this works uh, with our web program as well. Rob's here, says he's going to solve it. Slow right. Hey, There we go. Hey, you're on with Robbie Gordon. You're caller number four. Oh, how you doing? Good, good. What's, you, what's your master? You're the winner. All right. Master's uh, 1,005. 1,005. The winner tonight is gets a $250 credit on accessories. You can pick your credit. Oh, my gosh. Huh? <laughs> well, I'll have to go through and look. Is that something I got to choose right now? Nope. You don't have to choose. Uh, we, you can you can choose at a later time, but you have a two hundred and fifty dollar credit towards accessories. Awesome! I really appreciate that. No problem. One zero zero five is your master, correct? Yes, sir. And how about your first first and last name? Uh, first name is Ryan R Y A N. Okay, we got you. We got you. We got you. Okay, cool. They've already found you. Got it. Confirmed. Done. So thank you very much. All right. What's your question tonight? Thank you. Uh, so I just have a quick question. So I saw um, if you do order it with the radio, it comes through um, with the slots already obviously cut out. Um, if I already have a radio uh, PCI, the track system, is that something I'll be able to order that faceplate separately? 
and uh, install that myself, or would I have to cut it out myself? Well, the, when you remove the faceplate, the plastic on the backside is already pre-cut out. So okay, you, right. you know, I, I don't know if you have a radio or intercom. Um, you say you have a PCI track system. Uh, I believe yeah, you. I believe. Radio. Yeah, I believe you would be able to mount it right in the face, um, or you can regroup with PCI uh, and get and figure out how to get it mounted with them. Okay. Awesome. Well, really, that was my uh, my only question. Everything else gets answered weekly, so I appreciate everything you guys are doing. And I'm really looking forward to it. All right. I know you guys have been asking for production plastic stuff, so now you're now you're obviously seeing production plastic, production doors. There's a couple small fit and finish pieces that aren't there yet, but most yeah, of yeah, most of it is. We're, we we definitely awesome. have have crossed over and headed towards the finish line. Yes, sir. It looks good. Keep Thank up the good work, and I appreciate everything you guys are doing. All right, I appreciate all you guys as well, um, and I'm going to try to give Nick a call back. Thank you. Awesome. All right, all right, Robbie. Take care. Working. Good job. You can work the phone. Hello. Yep. This is Domino's Pizza calling about your thick crust um, pizza with stuffed crust. You are definitely going to be more than 30 minutes late, Robbie. <laughs> <laughs> You're not getting it free. I'm sorry, Nick. <laughs> um, no, sorry about that. I was playing with the handle and hung up on you. I think you had... Uh, Swag questions. Uh, Rob Harris is said he will get this uh, up on the site. We do have t-shirts, hats, and sweatshirts already in place, and we will get that up on the site next week. Perfect. This week, he said. This week, he said before the weekend. Oh wow! No, it's sweet. I got some money. And, 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 he, and he said, I think he even said what? We're just waiting for the inventory numbers so we can. Have inventory them. numbers. All right, we're so done. What you're gonna do is you're gonna go to Speed UTV. On the top menu bar, there will be an apparel link that you will click, and it'll take you to. Speed UTV gear, which will be the site where we have all of our hats and stuff. Okay, so they got a plan here. They've been working on it. So what they have is they there'll be a new header, um, let's say Friday night, on the site. On the top header, it'll say apparel. Apparel. So click the apparel link. When you click the apparel link, it's going to take you to a different site, unfortunately, for right now. Yep. Speedutvgear.com. Speedutvgear.com. Yes. That'll lock you into Speed UTV gear. You can choose your your uh, your style and your fitment there. Well, you'll have to report back next week on how many on how much of a new millionaire you are on how much you sell. Well, we wouldn't do it without great customers and without everybody believing in us. And you guys, um, you know, I I know I get beat up on the on the links every once in a while, but we've stayed on our path. We focused. We're not going anywhere. And this car here is is very 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 close to finish line. And, um, you know, want to make sure we, we get the apparel out to you guys as well. And thank you for wanting to support the brand. Well, haters are going to hate when you've got an army behind you. So it's, it's pretty cool to watch. Well, thank you. Um, the biggest, so when they start coming, are you still planning uh, the, I guess, open parties when they start getting delivered? Bingo. Yeah, we, we will have open parties. We will have parties that our dealers have been very open to allow to do um, different deals at different dealers. I believe we have 78 dealers in place already, uh, all along the West Coast into Arizona and Nevada, Utah. Um, there's 78 of them. I don't know if all of them are listed yet on the site yet or not. I know Todd's working with the dealers, but the dealers have been very open about letting us do delivery parties with them as well because they want to be involved. Oh, perfect. And then did you guys have to build a bunch of test cars like for EPA stuff? We, like we have cars or something. We have built, we've had cars for a year. Okay. But we didn't, what we didn't, we didn't, I was just wondering if they were going to be when you're done with them before they got delivered, if they were going to be kind of passed around so we could see them in other areas that, well, people that haven't uh, yep. seen them in person yet. Well, we've got, we got four seaters that are, that are passed around to different supply places getting worked on. We've got um, El Diablos that you guys have seen testing. 
We've had cars at EPA for a very, very long time uh, because that was the first process is we needed to be able to make sure we passed and that everything was good. Oh, yeah. All right. Cool. Well, thanks, man. I appreciate your time and you guys have a good night. All right. Well, thank you very much. Uh, this will wrap up show number 63. We'll see you back next week for show 64. And uh, hopefully this week was a was a big week of updates. I mean, um, you guys have seen a lot of the insides and the outsides of how this car is. And there is no manufacturer that I'm aware of that has ever showed you the complete build from ground up of a, of a product. And from, from concept designs to ongoing changes um, to make it the best uh, that I know how to make it. And it's gonna be up to uh, all the guys that vote on UTV of the year or, or whatever that is for different swag mags. Um, we will definitely find out uh, where we rank up, but I know that we have built a beast and we look forward to showing up the races and parking at the start line right next to the competition. Hell yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Have a good week. We'll see you guys next week for show 64.